It's morning, and in the middle of the Plenmont Glacier, a helicopter is carrying a heavy cargo, tightly packed disposable bag canisters full of colour. The dye is so concentrated that it can permanently colour anything it comes into contact with. That's why the students helping run this experiment are being extra careful. Once poured from the canisters, the dye is initially deep red, but when mixed with water, changes to a harsh neon green. The colour is called uranin, it's fluorescent and can be detected in very small amounts in a lab. On the surface, it looks quite toxic. It is absolutely harmless and has the same properties as water as it needs to flow wherever water flows. Like this, it can trace where water goes. The project is part of the Swiss National Research Programme, which aims to improve the sustainable management of Switzerland's water resources. The researchers in this water tracing experiment want to gather more information about the Plenmort Glacier's complex drainage system. Once diluted to one nanogram per litre, the colour dye is no longer recognisable to the naked eye, but it can still be found by lab analysis. The researchers are looking at three parts of the glacier. From a geological point of view, there are three distinct areas. Each of these has a different supply point. From the first area, the largest amount of water flows to Lake Zoitzir. However, a part of it goes towards Bern. The second section, the middle one, also flows mainly towards Lake Zoitzir. The third section, the one where we are standing now, is the great unknown. We don't know where the water flows. The Plenmort Glacier is unique in Switzerland. It's totally flat and is located on a karst system with long underground routes. Meltwater flows through this largely unknown system. Only a small part of the water flows directly between the glacier and the rocks. To understand the system, the scientists are dyeing the water at the three different drainage points, each with a different colour. The middle of the glacier is yellow. Here it's red. For three weeks, over 1,000 water samples are taken and analysed. A few months later, the results come out, showing that from all three entry points, a lot of water flowed on the surface towards Bern. Only one of the entry points provided water to the south side of the mountain, and that was underground through the karst system. The Plenmort Glacier, like many other glaciers, is melting at a very fast rate. Studies have also shown how the rate at which glaciers are melting has increased considerably. In the summer of 2011 alone, the glacier retreated by more than two metres, According to a study by the University of Fribourg published in 2013, from 2040 the Plenmort Glacier will be melting at an increasing rate, and by the end of the century it will be mostly gone. This means that for the immediate future there will still be plentiful water supplies in the region, but over time in the summer, flowing streams like these will be replaced by seasonal droughts. With these studies, experts are trying to gain a better understanding on how to deal with the consequences melting glaciers will have on water security. An important role will be played by reservoirs. At the moment, we use reservoirs mainly for the use of hydroelectric plants. Now we're starting to talk about so-called multifunctional reservoirs. They would cater for the needs of irrigation, and at the same time, they would supply drinking water, or even the snow in winter. A second answer is to improve water management. That means that clear rules need to be enforced on who will be able to use water in times of scarcity. Some are already acting. At a local level, six of the 11 municipalities in the catchment area of the Plenmort Glacier have decided on a common future water management policy. It's a first step towards managing a possible future without glaciers.